Welcome to the Ben Wood Johnson Podcast. You can visit Dr. Johnson's blog at benwoodpost.com. Dr. Johnson's works can be found at drbenwoodjohnson.com. You can also support Dr. Johnson on Patreon, the link to which is in the description. Hey, welcome back to the Benwood Johnson Podcast. Uh, today is November the 12th, 2018, and this is podcast number 23. I am very happy to have you back with us this week one more time um, to discuss the concept of ethics. Uh, last week, we began our conversation about ethics. Uh, we introduced the concept in terms of how ethics is understood, how the concept itself uh, originated uh, to some extent, but we briefly talked about it last week. Uh, and this week, we're going to delve a little bit in detail uh, about the concept. Um, we are going to examine the, the concept from four paradigms. We are going to look at the concept from a, from a professional standpoint. Uh, in this case, we're talking about the ethics of profession. We're going to look at the concept uh, from a justice standpoint. In this case, we're talking about the ethics of justice. We are going to look at the concept from a caring perspective. In this case, we're talking about the ethics of care. We are also going to talk about the concept from a critique standpoint. And, and in this case, we're talking about the ethics of critique. The concept of ethics, as I have uh, mentioned uh, in an earlier podcast, is uh, a little bit elastic. It's a little bit fluid. We have certain uh, understandings about what ethics uh, is in terms of, you know, it is ethical, but it is not uh, settle in such a way that uh, we can tell when a behavior is ethical or when it is unethical. And one of the reasons uh, for that is that what is righteous is not set in stone. What is right in one aspect uh, of society is not necessarily the case in another. We also have to establish a, a clear difference between what is legal, what is illegal, and to make that distinction in terms of uh, righteousness. What is righteous is not necessarily legal. What is wrong is not necessarily illegal. So that's why sometimes the concept of ethics sort of fall within this crack where it is not necessarily illegal, but that doesn't necessarily make it righteous. And the same way, even though it is wrong, that does not necessarily make it illegal. Of course, some could argue that if it is wrong, it is supposed to be illegal. Well, that's where the, the drama of society sort of is unfolding because not everything that is illegal in society is also wrong. In the same way, not everything that is wrong is illegal in society. And that's where ethics sort of uh, come into play in terms of uh, deciphering or helping us decipher uh, certain conducts in terms of even though such a conduct may not be illegal, there's a chance that it might be unethical. So we have to look at the term and understanding from, from those four paradigms mentioned earlier. So if it is unethical, it, it violates a certain understanding within that particular society, within that particular so social environment. So without further ado, let us delve right into it. could we best describe the term ethics? What is ethics? Uh, generally, ethics is understood based on the notion of righteousness. That is, something is either good or bad. A behavior is either good or bad. An action or an omission is either good or bad. The term could be understood from a legal standpoint. That is, there are certain 
legal ramifications uh, or legal implications to doing something either good or bad. To omit from doing something either good or bad. So by that logic, ethics could be understood as the laws of society and the extent to which people are supposed or abide or are expected to abide by those laws. When we're talking about ethics, we are talking about a universal virtue, a universal way of being that is understood by every man at the same level. And that way is you as a human being understand that you cannot or you could not uh, do the wrong thing. You are to do the right thing. And that right thing is endowed in every human being. That is to say, as a person, you know the right from wrong. You know the right thing from the wrong thing. But I would say there is more to ethics than righteousness. There is more to ethics than right and wrong. Now, the term ethics could be understood as habitudes and customs. And as we've talked about in previous recordings, it's this notion that certain conducts could be either right or wrong, depending on the societal environment and the societal milieu where such a conduct is applicable. So the fact that it is wrong in this particular culture, in this custom, that does not necessarily make it wrong in every custom. Of course, when we're talking about ethics, again, remember we talked about the concept of universality. There are certain conducts that are universally understood. Uh, for instance, killing, uh, stealing, uh, or engaging in adulterous conduct. Uh, those are, are conducts that are understood universally to be wrong, although there are contexts where they're not considered wrong. For example, there are cultures where it is okay for a man to have uh, several wives or it is also okay for a man to take the life of another, whether it is because of religious belief or whether it is because of honor and whatnot. So there are certain cultures where even those universal understandings about righteousness could also be undermined or could also be understood from, from a different perspective. But the context of ethics in and of itself is based on the notion that you know, certain behaviors are unacceptable and other behaviors are also expected and by that logic uh, are also acceptable uh, and as a result such conducts are expected. But where did the term ethics uh, emanate? Uh, the term comes from a uh, Greek lexicon. It is known as ethicos which comes from another word known as ethos. So the, 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 the meaning of the term is that the term signifies the existence of certain customs or conducts uh, or ways of doing things, usages, if you will, within a particular environment, and in, in this case, in ancient Greek. But if we were to approach the term from a philosophical standpoint, um, it might be harder to appreciate. It might be harder to explicate. So the question we're asking is, is, is there a difference? Is there a clear difference between ethics and morality? In other words, is there a clear divide between what we know as ethical systems of belief and philosophical notions about those beliefs? Okay. So the, the concept of ethics could be understood from several, um, several angles, if you will. The first way to look at the term is from uh, the notion of profession. We could examine the concept based on the notion of justice. Uh, we could also examine it based on the notion of care or critique. So when we're looking at ethics from the professional paradigm, we are talking about professional ethics or the ethics of profession. So in this case, we're talking about certain conducts, certain behaviors that are either acceptable or unacceptable within a particular trade, within a particular profession. When we're talking about ethics from a caring perspective, which is also known as the ethics of care, we're talking about the way the individual is expected 
is supposed to develop a certain attitudes and those attitudes must be based on the notion of caring for the other. It is sort of a utilitarian approach to being in the world. So it's a way for the individual to act in a way that takes into account the needs of the individual, the needs of the other, the concept of caring for the other. But ethics could be understood from the concept of justice. And from that perspective, ethics is based on the notions of laws and the concept of righteousness. Of course, when we're talking about um, ethics as a, as a justice or the ethics of justice, we are in the uh, parameters of the works pioneered by um, Thomas Hobbes or Immanuel Kant. We could also include the works of other philosophers such as Jean-Jacques Rousseau, George Willem, Frederick Hegel, John Dewey, and Karl Marx, just to name a few. But we could also look at ethics from the concept of critique. This approach is known as the ethics of critique. From this perspective, we're talking about an ethics that is based on an examination of society as a whole, looking at societal issues and trying to understand the righteousness of those issues, whether or not it is okay for things to be a certain way in society. It is, is it okay for you know, members of society to behave a certain way? It is a way of looking at society as a whole and leveraging a critique of that society as a whole. But that critique has to be based on whether or not the society is doing something that is good or bad. Of course, this approach is sort of grounded on notions espoused by Immanuel Kant as well. But it is more like an inquisitive lens of society. So all these approaches provide a, a broader understanding, a broader a scope as to what is ethics and how could we best understand the concept. Of course, when we're talking about ethics from a professional standpoint, what to keep in mind is the notion that uh, certain professions have certain ways of structuring their trade. And those ways are based on notions of righteousness. That is, there are certain expectations as to how the trade is supposed to be uh, performed or to be, to be done. And therefore, the person who is part of that trade is expected to behave in this particular way. And failure to do so puts that person in a position where ethical concerns could be raised about that individual's behavior. And when we're looking at ethics uh, from the concept of justice, we have to take into account that there are certain conducts that are supposed to be uh, just in, 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 in and of themselves. That, that means you are supposed to behave in a way that is just to the other. And when you don't behave in such a way, we could look at your behavior from an ethical standpoint, meaning what you did was unjust. Now, it could be legal what you did, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is just. Okay? And when we're talking about ethics from this concept, from this paradigm, we're talking about ethics from a justice standpoint. Just the same, when we're talking about the ethics of care, we're talking about certain conducts that are supposed to be designed to care for the individual. Okay? So when you act in a way that takes into account the individual in terms of his or her needs, in terms of uh, the, the, you know, the situation that the individual is going through, and you act in a way to alleviate whatever that situation might be, then we're talking about the ethics of care. And the last approach is the concept of critique. Uh, in this case, we're talking about an ethical approach that is based on looking at society as a whole and trying to make sense of what's happening in the society in terms of righteousness, in terms of what is right, what is wrong. And the concept here, the idea is to examine the do's and the don'ts of that society to examine the conducts of the individuals or within that society is to examine the conducts of, of the institutions or the entities within that society and to evaluate whether those behaviors or conducts are righteous or not righteous in other words whether those behaviors are right or wrong so in a sense when we're talking about ethics we're talking about beliefs about the world we are also talking about the way we behave in the world of course our behavior in the world is based on the beliefs that we hold about the world but those beliefs in turn are based on philosophical paradigms about the world now of course we cannot tell 
uh, you know, where those beliefs come from. We could not tell whether or not those beliefs are inherently righteous, uh, to put it this way. But what we have to understand is that the world we live in today is a world that is based on certain worldviews to maintain a, a certain level of, of, of civility among the members of a society or, or community. And those values are based on the notion that the individual has an inherent understanding of the world in terms of what is wrong and what is right. So the individual from the start knows how to behave. The individual from the beginning has an understanding about what the world is and what the world is supposed to be. So whether or not the individual is a professional, whether or not the individual is behaving in a certain way, is treating another in a certain way, whether or not the individual is is analyzing the society as a whole, the individual is supposed to behave a certain way. There are certain expectations as to how the individual is supposed to behave. Those expectations, so long as they are based on notions of righteousness, they are ethical in nature. So when we're talking about ethics, we're talking about beliefs, at the same time behaviors which are inspired by those beliefs, which are supposed to guide the way the person is supposed to be and the way society is supposed to be in relation to the person. So it is this amalgam between what the person does how society treats the person that defines the society itself as a whole. So when we are talking about ethics, we are talking about righteousness, whether or not it is a belief, whether or not righteousness is based on the belief system, or whether or not those understandings are based on philosophical principles about what righteousness is or what righteousness could be. We are talking about ethical issues. So in that sense, ethics is the no or the beliefs that are guided by our understanding of what the world is or what the world could be.